you may recognize British actor David Gyasi from his work on films such as, did I say that correctly? Gyasi? It's, it's Jesse, but yes. it looks like Gyasi. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's Jesse's, um, it's, yeah, it's Ghanaian um, and it's the soft G, yeah. We'll, um, we'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Mm, so you'll mm. recognize David from his work on films such as Interstellar, um, Cloud Atlas, as well as the television series Carnival Row. Currently, David stars in the popular Netflix series, The Diplomat, which I thoroughly enjoyed, opposite Carrie Russell, written and created by Deborah Khan of The West Wing and um, Homeland. So today we're talking to David to learn more about his background, The Diplomat, thoughts on representation and more. Mm. So, David, thank you so much for meeting with us today. Such a pleasure. Um, so jumping right in, can you tell us a little bit about how you got into acting, how you broke into the industry, into the entertainment industry specifically? Yeah, sure. Th thank you for having me. Um, so um, how I got into the industry literally was, you know, my parents kind of giving me the plenty of options of what I could do with my life but they had to the options had to be had to have a degree and um, as well as having a degree they would have loved if it was in the medical profession or the law profession mm -hmm. um, so I um, I think Jeannie Ash Gina Asheray do you know Gina Asheray? I'm familiar yes Asheray. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she puts it brilliantly, you know. And like most children of immigrants, know this well. Like you, you know, you have three professions. Yeah, is that right? It's Absolutely. The three professions, so you know them, right? So yeah. the lawyer, the doctor, the doctor. <laughs> or the failure. Um, so <laughs> engineer, accountant, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? <laughs> failure. Good one. But I was actually I was allowed to be an engineer because I was the guy that you know I put up the shelves in the house or changed the light bulbs or whatever. So they were like, eh, maybe you are the engineer. I don't know. Maybe right. You, right. Can, you can do something there. So um, so I I I was kind of getting to that point where I was starting to have to choose you know a levels mm -hmm. college and um, thinking what could I study at that level um, and I found I probably had maybe three or four options in all honesty one of them could have been history um, and then maybe philosophy could have could have looked at that um, and then sports sports science maybe go into that kind of area mm -hmm. or acting and theater arts and what I found with all of those things interestingly history I wasn't great at knowing the dates of things but I would I would uh, I really remembered the stories I really remembered how this person's actions impacted this person and what that must have felt like and I would get swept away with what the dust would have felt like and the, the soil and the sandals and, and that would fascinate me. I could kind of live in those worlds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, philosophy and different kind of ways of being and, and where what would stories about and theories on things that kind of would occupy my my mind well as as well but what I what I found about those things and with sport to a certain extent is that it felt like work whereas when I when I would sort of happen a, upon plays or or different practitioners in the theatre world then that that felt comfortable and I could stay there for a long time and I didn't, didn't really want to be pulled out of that. So I would say that that really is how I then entered into this, this industry and thought, well, maybe I can, maybe I can build a career around that. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. A lot of, a lot of interesting things that you mentioned there, but again, we'll, we'll get into some of that. Um, so in The Diplomat, you play 
I want to get the titles correct because I can between the US and the UK and the foreign yeah. you play British Foreign Secretary Austin Dennison. Who yes. Works with, who works with Kerry Russell's uh, character, US Ambassador Kate Weiler. Um, mm. an international crisis. So was there a lot of, of, of research and self-reflection in the de development of the character of Dennison? And I know that yeah. I recall you mentioning that um, that there haven't been many uh, foreign secretaries in the UK uh, just ever. I think there was just one recently. So it didn't sound like you had a prototype or an example. Yeah, no, so I didn't. When, you know, when I first read, read it, I don't think there were any uh, foreign secretaries that had been people of color um at all so um that fascinated me the chance to kind of get to play that i mean whilst we were filming we had about four <laughs> i don't know if you were following what what was happening with our current government but yeah we we've been through a few and um and two of which, one of them was actually a Ghanaian of Ghanaian descent. Um, and I think he has the record for being the shortest serving foreign um, minister of all time. It didn't go great for him. Um, but so in answer to your question, research wise, it was, there was a lot to be done just from the perspective of, you know, this dialogue that that Deborah is wonderfully written. Yeah. Um, Very complex. At, at, at yeah, yeah, right. So, so imagine reading that and then thinking, how do I, how do we now get this to feel like it's, it's our language, mm -hmm. and that this is a world that these people actually live in and operate in. Mm -hmm. um, so, one of the first tasks was to begin to immerse myself in, in various different news outlets and radio shows and just have this political speak just around me all the time and then I found it useful also to because the, the program is called The Diplomat so I found it useful to kind of read articles in right-leaning newspapers as well as left-leaning newspapers the same article the same story and see how it could be perceived here and perceived here I found that interesting and useful um, and then I also, because, right, the, 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 in the diplomat, the current government within our, within our show is the same as, it's the same party as what the government is in England at the moment, which is the Tory conservative akin to your Republican party. And I always find that interesting uh, when people of color are in, are in that party. I, obviously we're not a monolith and we all have our own ideas and ideals and things that we follow. Um, I, it intrigues me some of the policies that come out and how they affect different members of our society, how you would sign up to that, even if you're not, even if you're not a person of color, let's say, but if policies come out that seem to affect people in a, in a certain socioeconomic class and, and, and affect them positively, and then other people in a different socioeconomic class, um, how you can sign off on that, you know? Um, and when it's dis disproportionate, so people that already seem to have a lot um, get tax breaks and people that don't seem to have a lot have taxes raised or, or are having to go on strike to um, to try and get stuff that's just just a pay that's reflected in where inflation is. So mm -hmm. I find that I found that fascinating and something that I, I really wanted to explore with Denison and thankfully Deborah also thought it would be interesting if not only did Denison um, come from, did not only did Denison look like me, but if he came from a background where 
his upbringing, he was able to see some of the effect of some of these policies and see the struggle and the hard work that his parents would have gone through and where he, where his house was, what his neighbours would have gone through, if he was able to see that and carry that into Parliament with him. Maybe not be so vocal about it, but it's in his body and in his being. What does that turmoil look like? What does that juxtaposition what does he feel and how can he perhaps steer certain things to try and benefit people without without getting the, the full praise for all of that, if that makes any sense? No, it totally does. Because the entire, okay. I felt like I saw the turmoil, you know? Okay, I mean, cool. Necessarily just said he wasn't very vocal about it and as he could yeah. have been, but there's a lot that goes into these, these positions, right? So... I definitely saw it visibly. And and that's the thing, right? So one of the one of the politicians I interviewed, I remember being sat with him and saying, um, how how have you been? Because it had been a particularly busy, um, tumultuous week in politics. And I was I was like, How have you been? And he he said, I've, I've been well, kind of slightly shocked that I was asking that question. And I said, you know, because there's, a, there's been a lot going on this week. He said, remind me what's gone on this week. And then I'm thinking, is this, what, what is this? Like, this is a right top level, you know, he's in the opposition party, but he's like a shadow minister. Mm-hmm. Um, and likely to, to be, you know, in position when we have a general election. I was thinking, does he know? And he said, he said two things to me that really just rang like a bell in my head. The first one was, he said, remind me what's going on. And I told him and he said, that's just noise. It's just noise. He said, if you knew what I was actually dealing with, and then all of a sudden I realized that the headlines were just noise. They weren't actually things that affected you or I. They were just noise. And I thought, wow, how we get distracted by where people tell us to point out, to point our eyes and look, right? So that was massive when he said that. And then the other thing he said is, you know, um, about being above reproach as a person of color in politics. He said, if you think about anyone who's made real change, and if Denison is someone who is looking to make real change within our fictional world, then you have to look at the people that have done that. And he said, I'm "I'm talking about serious, serious players. He said, I'm talking about my friend, Obama. He said, I'm talking about Condoleezza Rice. I'm talking about Colin Powell. So he was picking people from all all sides, but he was saying, like, actually, you look at them as serious people. And that's really, I mean, it's a lot that we put on ourselves, right, to be above reproach. But maybe Denison's in that camp as well. So, um, yeah, that is, um, that's, yeah, part of the, part of the, the, I don't know if it's crossed to bear or whatever. Part of the task that Denison has, yeah. Okay, yeah. He, he I, I, um, I sympathize. Mm. <laughs> sympathize with mm. So, kind of, I think you answered my question about as my my question was going to be around aspects of the character that you identify with personally. Or yeah. So, I feel like you touched on some of that. Unless you want to expand a little bit more. Well, you know, I. I I was saying that um, Deborah had to give me a note once mm-hmm. and and I really appreciated the note because, you know, when you get to play someone like, like Denison, for me, I kind, of, I kind of feel like, I don't know, they have a sort of status, I think, wow, to be that cool and to hold all of that inside and still be that articulate and be able to answer this so quickly and whatever, they kind of start to form a slight heroic um status in in my head Mm -hmm. and there was one particular kind of back and forth that that Denison has um with Kate and she ends it on a line and I was like "Ah, 
I don't know. I don't feel comfortable with that, you know, with that line and with, um, I feel like, I feel like it's just quite arrogant. No, it's, she, ends it, she ends it on a line. He says a line before that I found to be distasteful and, and have arrogance within it. Mm-hmm. And Deborah said, I get that, but you have to remember he's human. And actually to be, it, to hold a position that he holds within a government, there has to be an element of arrogance and um, posturing that comes with that. You have to have that. And some of the politicians I spoke to were talking about what it's like crossing that line for the first time, crossing the floor for the first time in the Houses of Parliament and speaking for the first time. There has to be something within you that drives you to even go and go and do a job like that. So that helped me um, make him more human. That that helped me sort of round off his character in in a more interesting way than to be this kind of just heroic figure character. So um, in answer to your question, there for me that there, there will be aspects of me that I that I put into it, but then there is an element of me that looks to Denison and sort of thinks when I grow up, I want to be, I want to be like that guy. Right. Um, but then there is also elements of him that I'm like, wow, I, I would not like to, I'd like to not have that as well. So you want to I wonder what, the line was? what the line was. Um, it, yeah, it, it was a lot. It was a line in episode in season one where Dennison says something along the lines of, you know, thanks to you, I I no longer have the influence that I had over Trowbridge, over the prime minister. He sort of makes a statement and it's like he thinks he's been a he's been the puppeteer to Trowbridge. And I wanted the line to be thanks to you. What little influence I had over Trowbridge is now gone. And um, say again, sorry. David's humility, sort of. Right, right. Maybe, yeah. Maybe David, when he's in his, when he's in his kind of present mind and doesn't have the pressure of a solid argument going on, maybe just being able to go, what little influence I had is now gone. Mm-hmm. But when you're in the heat of the moment and World War Three is about to kick off, maybe it doesn't come out as smoothly as that, right? And then for Kate to say sorry that had gone a long time ago that influence had gone a long time ago and I just was like what um so yeah that that and I and I thanked her for it I liked that he had that color to him that actually he thought yeah I'm this is and and with his backstory it makes sense that he would think that as well so yeah um so I'm looking at the 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 cast and I'm looking at yeah. the actors and their names, and I'm I'm t- I'm seeing three. I've been to Ghana a couple of times, so I'm familiar with the names. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Um, so I see three. I recognize three Ghanaian names in the cast. Yeah, yeah. What, what? I I don't think I've ever seen this before. <laughs> What's happening? I was so excited. And a, a show on this scale, a series on this scale. Um, mm. I was familiar with Ato Asando. Mm. I. Mm. Dana Mensa, I was not familiar with her, but I know okay. I talked about her and other people were. So um, yeah, three uh, three Ghanaian uh, actors on on a on a show mm. platform and integral roles. Mm. Um, what were your thoughts? Was that a coincidence in terms of the casting? Is there some sort of is it is there going to be a reference point to that at some point? Is it too early to say? Yeah. Um, well. Um... I, you know, I had all those questions when I saw, I was like, wait a second. Well, because it's the first time I've ever been in that situation, ever, right. ever. Okay, so um, <laughs> no, no, it wasn't just it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we all were like, what? And I said to Deborah, is this like, I wondered if she had maybe been to Ghana or whatever. She's like, nope. It's just the way it, it's just the way it kind of, you know, shake down really. Um, I, I think it's wonderful that they are people of color in a series and there's no ceremony about it. They're just there. There's no like, 
the just the, you know the work that Atto's doing, Atto and Ali are doing, and it. it's just um, it's a beautiful relationship that that they're portraying as well as what he's doing vocally and doing you know his command of the the script is beautiful. And then I meant to just bring in a gravitas to that role and an authority to that role and a a beautiful kind of sexiness and what a like gorgeousness to it. There's no ceremony to it. They're just brilliant actors doing their job. And I love that, you know, I love that. Obviously, there will be elements of us that just as I bring some of some of my Davidisms to it and my experience to it. So does Atta and so does Nana. Um, but I I love that we're sort of maybe moving into a space where we can just have people of colour on screen just doing their beautiful, wonderful work and people are just seeing that, you know. That's, um, that's quite amazing. Yeah, and, you know, even the way they interact with each other, it's not, it's not a thing. It's just conversation. They're kind of... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Stuart and uh, and Billy, they're kind of doing their own thing on the side. Mm. They're kind of like, yeah, it, it, it was, mm. I hadn't seen anything like that before. So it's mm. definitely something that was interesting. Um, so what would you like to see potentially for, I know you probably get asked this all the time about season two, mm -hmm. season two, but what would you like to see for Denison in a second, a potential second season? I think it's it's funny, you know, because um, I'm just I'm just in the middle of reading the second episode of the of the second lot. You know that we've been we've been commissioned, yeah. Not no, not yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. Thank you. Of everything that's going on, congratulations. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and, and so it's, it's one of those where, again, Deborah's writing is so, um, nuanced and just, just wonderfully kind of on point that, um, having read one and then bits of two, I think we begin to see from Denison stuff that I didn't even think I wanted to see. But, uh, you know, I could have, like, given you broad strokes of what I want to see. But I, I mean, if you've, if you've watched season one, you'll be very happy with what we begin to see, the kind of how, how um, Deborah is honouring what we've laid down in season one, I mm -hmm. think is, so far, I've only read, like, one and a half episodes but so far I'm like wow I'm so pleased to be on this on this show I'm so excited to hear that mm. I, you know there, there were a couple of cliffhangers I mean not just the, the major one that everyone's kind of talking about but yeah myself and Kate's character mm. you know mm. I call I refer to uh Carrie Russell as the queen of of love triangles so, <laughs> is that right? Does that happen know. in her other shows? I, I don't know if you're, you, you're probably, I, I'm not sure if you've seen Felicity, but that was one of the big yeah. themes of Felicity. Yeah, it was a big. Okay. Showing my age here, because this was a while ago, but. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. College, and it was, a, it was centered around a love triangle, triangle between her and uh, two, two suitors. And um, yeah. you know, that was the fundamental kind of theme of the show. And yeah. It was it was quite interesting. So to kind of um, without spoiling anything, to kind of see hints of that and the chemistry being just very believable. That mm. was uh, as well. So um, thank you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's interesting. Um, so just along the lines of this uh, conversation about um, the, the the British dynamic, and I, I saw one of the episodes called the James Bond clause. Mm. So, um, what? Curious as to your take on the conversation around James Bond and black, just the idea of black actors coming up in that conversation for casting, unless mm. that, unless that role has already been cast, and I'm I haven't been aware of that. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I think they're I think they're looking at that. Well, 
they're always it says they're always looking at people for it aren't they um and um i what, what do i think about that i think it's it's probably a little it's probably a little difficult for me as someone who grew up in the theater watching you know there's like i don't know if you take hamlet for example there's been so many versions of hamlet which are wonderful to hear and see different people from mm -hmm. Papa Asiadu's version to Rory Kinnear's version to Mel Gibson's version on film, all very different. Uh, there was a wonderful actor called Simon Russell Beale who, who did a Hamlet that I, I watched as a student. And I, I remember thinking when I sat there, I remember thinking, oh no, this, this is not Hamlet. You know, he was, he was probably mid 40s at that time and he had a kind of camp edge to Hamlet and me as a student I was thinking no camp at Hamlet is this and within half a sentence I was like wow yeah. this is a fantastic interpretation and I, I was on the front row and I you know I was like standard ovation I think uh, in the interval I just was blown I was mesmerized by it so for, for me I'm not locked into the idea that um to play James Bond you've got to look a certain way or be a certain way but I do realize that some people have attachments to that and um and and you know I'm kind of not gonna not gonna get into that or get in the way of that um I I thought that for a while they were talking about Idris, right, to, to play to Very play nice. James Bond, who, who would have been amazing, right? But I don't know if you saw The Last Luther. I loved that. I loved what he's done with that. And, mm -hmm. and I found that really inspiring, actually, to be honest. I remember saying to my team that that is what he's done there is potentially create his own franchise, which is which I would happily go and see the next installment of that now that he's without without any spoilers but something something happens at the end that suggests you know um that suggests that there'll be more so um yeah I, I think it's a I think it's a I like what they've done from like the you know, before when I was growing up, it seemed like James Bond just had all like dif different women in different countries and all of that. And then, the, then I was thinking, oh, that's that's yeah, that's okay, that's interesting. I don't know if that's still relevant today. But then you had like the Piers Brosnan era. The Bond where, girl was a thing, you know. The Bond girl was a thing, right? Mm -hmm. Right. But then, but then I quite I quite like the way that they. I think it was I think it was the Piers Brosnan where they where. There, there was the AIDS epidemic happening um, in the world. So all of a sudden, the Bond, I don't know if you noticed, but the Bond guy had one woman in the show. It went from being, yeah. Lots and so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, listen, uh, it's a great franchise, and I hope that it, um, that it comes back and comes back strong. That's what I would say about it. But it was it was interesting to see that they called that the James Bond um, clause, right? Yeah. And then and then had Denison in a touch. Exactly. So I was mm. maybe kind of triggered the question if it's something. So it sounds like it's something. If you if your name were to if you were to be offered the role or your name were it's something you would consider. You know, I I, I honestly like. The, for me, the, my friend has a saying called the work is the work is the work. Mm -hmm. If there was a script that came out that I I was like, wow, that is fascinating and it and it blows my mind. And I think there's possibly something that I could add to that, then I'd I'd be honored to like have that conversation. But um, there's been no conversations as yet. Good to know, but appreciate the open perspective. <laughs> yeah. So um, in, in that same vein, what are your thoughts around the discussion around uh, the popularity, well, the uptick rather, of Black UK actors being cast in as, as leads in some of these American uh, film and television productions? Mm. A lot of conversation and opinions being kind of bandied about. So curious as to your thoughts. Yeah. I think it's um, I 
think several things about it. So for me, I can I, I can only speak from myself. A lot of my inspirations have come from you guys, the African American community, the creativity, the leadership that's been shown in fashion, in music, in movies. It's just something I've admired from afar and felt like have loved being able to partake in that to to like to see some of those shows you know when I was growing up to see um I, you know to see the Cosby show and I know that that's like that's really sad where where that that what that memory's turned into for all of us mm -hmm. um but the depiction of a family like that on on film and TV. I mean, it influenced me so much that actually when I first came out, I, I say this quite a lot, I said no a lot more than I said yes, because I felt like a lot of the scripts that I was being sent were, didn't, didn't reflect people that I knew, like my father or my brother or people that I aspired to be. Whereas a lot of the stuff that was coming in from America for me was doing that, be it hanging with Mr. Cooper, be it, you know, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, be it Sister Sister, all of these things oh. was just like such Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, such kind of n nourishment for, for me. Again, I can only speak personally. Mm -hmm. And so um, the those sounds and that music and that accent was just in our minds and in our psyche. So when um, the sort of the opportunity, because I think Hollywood is kind of, it's the biggest, it, it still is, I believe, the biggest part of our industry, Hollywood is, you know, I think then it's followed by Bollywood and then Nollywood comes in um, but the British film industry must be getting up there now it might it might be touching that but um, it's got to be it's got to be but so if you if you want to if you want to achieve things in whatever profession you're going in sometimes you go for the you go for the top right you you know I'm a football fan and i I would aim for the Premier League if I was if I was a footballer. That's where I'd be dreaming to get to. Um, and a lot of my career, um, you you kind of you get told no, or people are like, "Oh, but you couldn't play that part, or you don't audition for that." You know, I'm of that generation that saw us play the first the first Black King at the RSC was an actor they're sort of maybe just a bit older than me but your David Harewoods and your David Oyelowo's were breaking these and people boycotted the theatre so we've kind of come through we've come through a lot of being told no 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 and so then to kind of have these opportunities and these stories in in America um and be, having been told no, it's just a, it's just something that we're used to hearing and going. Okay, how do we? I'm, I'm I, I feel connected to this part, so I'm going to play this part, and it's that's something that's in our psyche. At the same time, I understand and I fully appreciate that there are some of my contemporaries, right, who are who are my generation and. Um, African American, and they are so much sharper, cleverer than than me. And um, and I know that when I sit in an audition room, I kind of sometimes get these extra IQ points because of the way I sound. Yet, yet my brother's got a PhD, which compares to my undergrad. And so there's there is a kind of there's a discussion to be had there about about that sort of thing. Uh, I, I'm just essentially I'm someone who's much more about um, about togetherness. I think I don't, I don't know if that's too kind of um, lofty a reach, but I'm someone that's much more about how do we how, how where 
how do we work together to move this to move our industry forward to tell stories to get um to get to a situation where we're on screen without much ceremony i love that the diplomat has this combination of american and british cast and um that that is say again sorry that, i'm sorry that was my favorite part about the international sort of cross yeah transatlantic you know the integration yeah. of the cultures you know not heavily weighted yeah. on one over the other kind of thing yeah yeah but uh, yeah i think i think that that that's the same with me and I, I would just say that you know if it's important that we listen to one another I don't think we should we should ever we should ever be like yo this is this is my life and this is what I'm doing and and just ignore if someone's in if someone's in pain or someone's like struggling we should we should listen to one another and just and just step through that you know and to hear one another um that's that's what I would say about it. That I don't have a full gone conclusion, but I think listening and respecting one another is is probably useful when we talk about that. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you, do I'm just I want to be cognizant of time. Do you have time for one or two more questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Yeah, yeah, okay, absolutely. Thank you. Um, just wanted to get your quick thoughts on the Writers Guild strike, which is now underway. Mm. Just. Mm. Have you, I have a sense of, of your thoughts, but just wanted to hear you expand on. Uh, what's your, your What's your sense of my thoughts? I mean, you're you're it's 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 necessary, <laughs> you know, and you kind of you kind of touched on why, and um, but I wanted to kind of if you if you could expand on that. Um, yeah, so for, I heard I heard something the other day. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I heard just the way that um, TV has changed. So before it was like, hey, we're going to do 24 episodes or 22 episodes and um, writers would make their money right. to sustain them for a year on that. And now TV, a lot of it is like, hey, we're going to do eight episodes or 10 mm -hmm. episodes. And so that and I don't know if the payment structure has changed okay. to suit that change in our industry, which seems really odd to me if that if that's one of the one of the kind of cruxes of it or one of the positions that that is on the table for discussion um i so from that perspective that makes sense that there needs to be a discussion about that um from just as a fan of good writing and a beneficiary of good writing um you know, we have this, uh, well, I also have a production company with my wife and we have this saying over here, which I think it may be, is maybe all over, but writer is the writer's king, you know, without that, mm. um, where do you, where do you go? So, um, so yeah, I think, I think it is necessary and I, I am, um, I'm supporting it from what I know and I hope that it's resolved quickly. Otherwise I'm, I'm not going to be working. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I'm um, just looking to wrap this up. Interview. Thank you so much for your time. But are there any? You mentioned your production company with your wife. Um, are there mm. any projects that you're working on that you're able to share at this time? Yeah. So we we just say again, sorry. In addition to season two of the Diplomatic, I'm so excited. In addition, yeah, 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 yeah. So that that's going to take up a lot a large chunk of of my year um but in the hiatus we co-produced a short film with um with he's actually an actor but he he directed and wrote this a piece uh, a guy called Alex Lenny Peckham who's an amazing um creative actually um so he was an actor he was on Troy with me we did a series called Troy Fall of a City but I knew him from before um his partner in life and in in production partner is an actress called Natalie Emmanuel uh so her and I are, are in it and um Nicholas Pinnock yeah exactly yeah 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 so uh we've got an incredible cast for it actually so it's Nicholas Pinnock um yeah. Natalie, Natalie Emmanuel Pippa Bennett Warner 
um, who you might know from Gangs of London, if you saw that, amongst other things. Um, she was also in a film quite, I think, like, I don't want to misquote the film, but she's amazing. Um, an actor called Joel Fry, who's fantastic as well, and myself are kind of the main the main characters in it. And we've just, and I love the script. I, I feel very, very passionate about it. In fact, I've just had a production meeting, a post-production meeting about it to, before, two calls before you. Um, and uh, we are looking to sort of put that out in in festivals later on this year and um and then hopefully turn that into um uh, well i'm not allowed to sort of speak on that what we that's the idea you got to speak it into you know this you got to speak it in right and so for me for me i think this i think the short will be uh, an amazing proof of concept for for people that um so yeah that want to invest and we'll go and make a, either a long form or it, I mean it could be a series but I think it's I think it actually will turn into a really nice feature um so that um and then we've got various other bits but they're sort of earlier on we're just developing a, a kind of sitcom at the moment um so we're doing that um and various other bits uh so yeah and what's the name of the production company our production company is called Wednesday Morning Productions. Um, and actually, so yeah, how we, <laughs> it's, uh, it's weird how we came up with the name actually. So we, in lockdown uh, and where things stopped, Emma and I, Emma's my wife, we, we sort of thought we need to like, we need to find a space for creativity. It was really, I really enjoyed the pause of lockdown. I really enjoyed sitting on my balcony and reading and walking and uh, and all of that thing and all of those things. And and thankfully we didn't lose any any lives of people close close to us or anything like that. So um, so I enjoyed that. But we thought, what what are we going to do with this time? So we started meeting on a uh, on a Wednesday morning to just talk about different ideas that that we had that she's very good at coming up with ideas in fact she has a she has a podcast that she's just launched which is brilliant which is about sort of mind body soul and stage health how you kind of how you yeah how you look after yourself and it makes sense having been married for almost 24 years and and seen how we uh, <laughs> congratulations thank you thank you um and sort of having journeyed that way together um to see how i have she has we have managed to keep sort of healthy mentally um and physically during that period um in an industry that goes up and down so so that's yeah so that's one of the things from our production company which is great um but so we used to meet on a wednesday morning and then it got to the point where we started having interest and people were saying, look, would you help pr produce this or sign this? So we needed to come up with a name. We were thinking maybe we could, maybe we could uh, call it by our names um, and Emma and David productions to kind of have the sexy ring to it. So we were like middle names. My wife is uh, of Spanish origin. So her middle name is Rocio, um, which, uh, which means morning dew. And my middle name is Kweku, which is uh, a boy born on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So we were like Kweku or Theo. And then we were like, I don't know. Well, maybe Wednesday morning works. And then we phoned the accountant, registered the name. And then we were like, and we meet on a Wednesday morning. And we realized that. Yeah. So oh, a long way of saying what the name is. That's perfect. That's perfect. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you so much. Truly appreciate your time, um, especially Thank on this you. Friday. Um, congratulations on everything, including season two of The Diplomat. Um, I know yeah. it's so early on, but just so excited about that. Um, it's been a pleasure, and I hope you have a great weekend. Um, I do, is, is Cinco de Mayo a thing in the UK or not so much? uh Cinco de Mayo is not but I've heard that before I've heard that why have I heard that it's it's a big sort of kind of party I I, I don't want to go into misspeak about the history and its origin yeah, but yeah. 
here in the US. So it's it's in some Is that of the happening this weekend. It's today, the fifth of May. Yeah. Hey, and in in the movie In the Heights, do they sing about that? Sing go the mile. No. I haven't okay. well, they okay. Okay. because there's some I want to say Latin it's, it, it, I think it yeah, yeah. there's a Mexican connection there there's okay. a lot of drinking okay. margaritas and stuff so um yeah. yeah oh so that's happening we have the coronation of our king this Saturday so that's that's taken up a lot of people's time gotcha gotcha all righty then mm. Okay, <laughs> good to know. <laughs> well, either way, whatever you get into, enjoy and congrats again. It has been such a pleasure. Likewise, I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Thank you for your time.